Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. I'm Ollie. This is Creme Dolly, where I talk about crime, pop, horror, that kind of thing. Um, today I'm doing my December wrap up. So December was a pretty good month for me reading rise. I read 23 books um, and DNF'd two. Um, so I'll talk about all of the books in this video, but what I'm going to do is for the first part of the video, I'm going to focus on books I read in the, in the last week. Um, I've done weekly update videos, so I'll link to those. So I'll, I will mention all the books I read this month. But if you want a bit more in-depth discussion of them, look at the weekly videos, which I'll, I'll link to. Um, but yeah, in terms of the last week, so the books that I haven't spoken about, um, in other videos. So three Kindle books, um, which were Death World by Harry Harrison, which is a sci-fi novel from, I think, the 60s. I'm not actually sure. Um, I think it's from the 60s. I originally read it um, when I was about 13, I think. So my dad had a battered old paperback copy of it, um, which I read. Um, so this was my first time um, rereading it. So, you know, some 35 years later. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's very silly, but it's a lot of fun. It's about this guy, um, so it's set in a, some undisclosed point in the future. Um, it's about this guy who's psychic, who um, like uses his psychic ability to um, win money gambling, um, who gets hired by this mysterious um, organisation to win a load of money for them, basically, and ends up going with them to this planet um, so they raise, it turns out they need this money to, to try and um, help people on this planet. And the, the planet is a planet where all of the native like flora and fauna is incredibly deadly and hostile. Um, and it's basically about the guy travelling to this planet, um, you know, getting trained on how to survive on the planet. And then realising that there's a bit more going on um, than the people that live on the planet realise. Um, so it's quite silly, but really good fun and quite a, quite a nice concept. Um, the uh, next Kindle book I read was Doc Savage, Man of Bronze by Kenneth Robeson. Um, so the very first of the Doc Savage books from back in the 30s, which is just a very silly pulp adventure. Um, so Doc, Doc Savage is kind of a, in, in many ways, considered to be a precursor to like comic book superheroes. So he's an absolutely perfect individual you know, he's incredibly intelligent, he's incredibly fit, um, you know, he can do all sorts of things. Um, the book talks about how he, you know, spends two hours every day doing mental and physical training to keep himself in peak condition. Um, and he's got this gang of, I think, five people who um, who work with him on his missions, um, who've each got their own specialities. So there's like one who's an expert engineer and things like that. Um, and in this one, so in this first book, Doc Savage is father has just died and has left this mysterious note about a um, something that's been bequeathed to Doc Savage um, which he has to travel to this um, South American country to find out uh, to, to discover and there's you know there's mysterious people doing murders and stuff like that so very silly probably a little bit racist to be honest with you um, but very entertaining. Um, next on the uh, on my Kindle reads was something even older um, so um, the first of the Barsoom books by Edgar Rice Barrows, um, A Princess of Mars, which again was a you know a very enjoyable pulp adventure from I think it was written in the nineteen tens. Um, so yeah, about this guy John Carter who, um, for for reasons which are never really made clear, travels to Mars um, and you know meets the the Martians that live there and gets involved in a in a kind of war between. Um, these rival species on the planet um, so full of you know fantastic swashbuckling star adventure um, a bit of romance just uh, and, and wonderfully inventive as well so you know great um, inventiveness in terms of the, the different um, alien species that he meets in terms of you know how he can how, how he can um, perform and excel on, on Mars because of the low gravity and things like that. So just a really fun, um, kind of a silly adventure book. Um, but yeah, very much enjoyed it and looking forward to reading um, more in that series. Um, so getting off of Kindle books, actually, I'll tell you about the Kindle book I'm reading at the moment first, actually. So I'm currently reading 
Um, this is a terrible colour because it's a, an arc. Um, but The Book of Sam by Theo Clare. So Theo Clare, better known as Mo Hader, um, the crime writer, um, who sadly passed away last year. Um, so this is a... Um, a, a sci-fi book really um so it's a it, so far I'm, I'm only about 20 percent in um but it's two competing narratives one of which is about a teenage girl in what seems to be kind of modern america so fairly standard kind of high school stuff but there's definitely some mystery in, in her background um and then the other part of the book is about this group of people living on this strange kind of desert planet um, who are um, having to undertake a series of challenges um, for reasons which aren't clear. Um, but it's really compellingly written. I'm, I'm enjoying it very much so far. Um, right, so in terms of paper books that I read this month then, so I think when I did my last weekly, sorry, not this month, this last week. So when I did my last weekly wrap up, um, I think I've just started All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. Um, I've done a separate review video on this i didn't like it very much i found it to be very overwritten and that the the prose style just got in the way of the story so it's about this young guy kind of on a coming of age voyage of discovery um riding across um some of the southern states of america and down to mexico um with a friend of his um it's got you know all all the um ingredients of a, of a really good story so you know it's got um betrayal it's got love it's got um you know imprisonment um you know violence revenge all that kind of stuff um but yeah i just found that cormac mccarthy's overblown writing style just really got in the way for me so didn't enjoy that um also read um this mammoth so swan song by robert r mccammon um which i'll probably do a separate video on so this is a um a post apocalyptic story about um people in america trying to survive after a nuclear holocaust um so written in the 80s when obviously nuclear holocausts were um, all the rage um a really entertaining book so similar to stephen king's the stand in many ways in that it's got a bit of a kind of spiritual element to it um it's it's almost like a fantasy novel really rather than a um a horror novel it's got that kind of quest plot line um got some interesting characters and it's 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 probably not as ambitious as the stand but it's a it's a much more even book um so very readable very consistent throughout um just a really en enjoyable kind of fancy adventure really um also read so both of those books were on my tbr for december the kindle books weren't so i got a bit further through um my tbr so i read everything that was on my tbr apart from the two books that i dnf'd um so I then picked up some other things and wanted to get some shorter books um under my belt because to be honest with you i'm doing this 100 book challenge um so the quicker i can get through 100 books the better really so the, the kindle books i've talked about apart from the book of sam which is 600 pages i think the other kindle books i've talked about are all shorter ones kind of 150 to 200 pages um and also plucked um, these three books off my shelves as shorter ones to read this week um, to get that um, 100 book challenge total up a bit so um, I read Shattered by Dean Coon so this is one of his early books I think it was from 1973 um, and just a quite straightforward um, really enjoyable suspense novel about this guy who's um, who's traveling driving across America um, because he's moving to California with his new wife um her younger brother um is in the car with with the with the hero um but they're being stalked by this mysterious guy in a van um and you know violence ensues as they travel across the state um so yeah very suspenseful a bit silly to be honest with you but yeah very suspenseful um and, and well written and i reflect it made me reflect on the fact that coots does this sort of thing really well and I, I think it's a bit of a shame that, you know, more recently, or well, certainly more recently than the early 1970s, in, in the kind of 90s particularly, he tended to get a bit more philosophical um, and his books got longer and longer. But this kind of short suspense novel, suspense I think he does really well. Um, also read this one, so Night of the Phoenix by Jack Cannon, also known as Nelson DeMille. Um, so DeMille is quite well known as a writer of kind of big, chunky espionage thrillers. 
um, but started his career writing these um, kind of short, nasty, pulpy cop novels um, about this guy called Joe Riker, um, who's a New York cop, who's an absolute bastard, basically. <laughs> he really is a shit. Um, so in this one, um, he's investigating a murder which turns out to be linked to the CIA and, and a guy who was a CIA operative um, in Vietnam. Um, so quite an enjoyable uh, kind of mystery slash cop novel. Um, yeah, quite brutal at times. And, and as I say, Riker's just an, an absolute bastard, um, but quite enjoyable. Um, and also read uh, this by Ed McBain, who's one of my very favourite writers. In fact, probably my favourite writer. So this was fantastic. So this is an early novel by him, originally published under um, another name. I can't remember what the name was. I didn't say on the back, but it was pub published under one of his other pseudonyms. So Edmund Bain isn't the guy's real name anyway, um, but he's best known as Edmund Bain. Um, so this is a mystery novel, um, as I say, from the 50s, about a guy um, and his fiancée who check into a motel um, in the middle of the night and then the fiancée goes missing. Um, actually, what happens first? So they check into the motel. It's the 50s. And they're, they're a very... Um, kind of decent upright couple. So because they are engaged but not married, they have separate cabins at the motel. Um, the guy kind of tucks her into bed and then goes back to his cabin and finds this um, woman who you can see on the cover here um, in his bed who attempts to seduce him. Um, and he eventually manages to get rid of her. And then when he goes back to um, to check on his, um, on his other half, she's disappeared. Um, so it, and it, the mystery just kind of, grows from there so it was really very very entertaining um really fast paced um it had a great 50s vibe to it so yeah thoroughly enjoyed that okay so that's what i've read um in the last week all the other books um, which i've got here i will talk about quickly but i've done um i've included all of these as i say in previous wrap-up videos um, but let me go through them quickly. Um, anyway, so the two that I did I DNF'd, which I think probably haven't been included in wrap-up videos, were Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, which I think I've got about 200 pages into, and it was it just felt like a bit of a slog. Um, so, yeah, gave up on that one. Obviously, hugely respected, you know, multi-award winning. Loads of people love this book, but it just wasn't for me. Um, and I also DNF'd Captain Blood by Michael Bodgett, Blodgett, Blodgett, which I think I've read in the past. I certainly had a copy of it when I was younger, um, but I, I tried to get into this and, it, and I only managed a few pages to be honest with it. It just wasn't the right time for me and it. Um, but yeah, it's, it just felt very, very kind of, the, the prose was incredibly purple um, and a bit weird and I just couldn't get into it. But I will try it again because lots of people say this is very good. Um, so stuff I did finish then. So let's try and do this in the crime pulp horror um, order so crime dead city which i've done a separate video on by uh, by shane stevens from the 70s absolutely fantastic mob novel very disturbing very gritty very believable like, really incredibly horrible um, so that was excellent um i think that's the only crime one i've got here yep uh so pulp so we've got a few of these so Sue Uprising, uh, which I think is Edge Book 11, yeah, Book 11 by George G. Gilman, um, which is just a fantastic Western with a really brilliant twist ending, which I adored. Um, Night Kill, uh, so Mac Bowler and the Execution of Book 124, so I have done a video on this one, um, but yeah, it, was a, it wasn't quite as good as I hoped it to be, so Boland's like this kind of vigilante character, and this one is him against the um, a group of Satanists, um, which sounded like a fantastic concept, but it didn't quite deliver. Um, also read book six, I think, in the series. So Nightmare in New York, which was brilliant. So one of the early executioner books from the 70s. Absolutely fantastic. Really, he really knocked it out of the park with this one, Don Pendleton. Um, that you really, really hate the villains by the end of it. You really, really want Boland to... Um, to kick their asses, which he, he definitely does. Um, survivalist book two, The Nightmare Begins. Um, so another post-apocalyptic one, like Swan Song. This one, definitely not philosophical or spiritual. Um, just a guy riding around America shooting people, basically. 
um, but yeah, very entertaining. Um, no Man's of Gore, the fourth Gore book, um, which, as with the others, is a, an interesting blend of kind of colourful pulp fantasy and um, misogynistic philosophising. Um, but yeah, a, a, an entertaining adventure book. Um, and Phoenix, um, what's it called? Phoenix Book Two, Ground Zero by David Alexander, um, which is a very silly 80s pulp um, adventure, um, completely over the top, incredibly violent. Um, very, very silly, but quite imaginative as well, and, and I definitely enjoyed it. Um, so that is the pulps, on to the horrors. So a few of those. So um, my very first Goosebumps book that I have ever read, Goosebumps Deep Trouble by R.L. Stein, um, which was a um, an entertaining kind of kids' adventure. Not really horror, to be honest with you, more of kind of a fantasy. Um, but yeah, quite enjoyable. I've, I've done a video on this one. Um, the Children That God Forgot by Graham Masterton, which was in the November Abominable Book Club box, um, which was a really fun, quite pulpy, quite over-the-top um, horror novel. Um, yeah, really, really weird and very entertaining um, and incredibly graphic at times. Um, Island by Richard Lehman, which I talked about in my We Need to Talk About Lehman video, um, which was pretty repellent, really. Um, so people shipwrecked on an island um, with lots of women in bikinis. Um, so yeah, it didn't it, it's readable but not great. Um, the Master by Guy and Smith. So did a buddy read of this with one from Plague by Visions. Um, it was a bit disappointing to be honest with you. It's it's not nearly as horrible as I hoped it would be. It has some interesting moments, but it's only really right at the end that that it becomes a proper horror novel. Um, and it, it was a bit boring, <laughs> the, the journey to get to that part, part of the book was a bit dull. Um, and then Dearest by Peter Lochran, which I read fairly early on in the month. So again, I've done a video um, on this one. So this was a very um, dark um, tale of obsession, really. Um, so yeah, very, as, as weird and disturbing as that cover makes it look, I had one scene in it that just was mind-blowingly horrible um yeah so that's the horrors and then um that kind of thing so other stuff i've read which is neither crime pulp nor horror um so trial by battle by david piper um which is a really excellent um 50s second world war novel um i've done a video on this one i'll try and remember to link to all these videos in the uh in the description for this one um but yeah that was very good um the first of the lord of the rings book the Fel books, sorry, the Fellowship of the Ring by J. R. R. Tolkien, um, which you know needs no introduction. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and will definitely be reading book two in January. Um, and then finally, um, from those wonderful folks who gave you Pearl Harbor by Jerry De La Femina, um, which is a um, non-fiction book about the advertising industry in the states, um, which was it was very entertaining. So I read this for my um, work book club. Um, so yeah, it was a very entertaining read, but um, a bit, I don't know, he, he comes across as a bit of a dick at times, to be honest with you, um, but it was, a, it was a fun read anyway. So that's my December wrap up. Um, I'm going to, um, I'll leave you to your days. I hope 2022 is being good to you so far. Um, I'm going to shoot my uh, January TBR video um, in a moment. So I'm probably going to put this one, the December one up today, New Year's Day. I'll put the January TBR one up probably on uh, the 2nd of January, the day after New Year's Day. Um, and then I've got a couple more videos I'm going to be shooting today as well, which will go up during the week. Um, so plenty to look forward to um, if you enjoy the stuff I do on my channel. Also a reminder that tomorrow, 2nd of January, um, is the day that the new Leviathan Libraries website um, goes live. So it's a website I'm a contributor to. Um, with reviews of you know books, video games, movies across a wide range of genres, but you know including crime and pulp definitely. Oh, sorry, crime, pulp, and horror definitely. Um, so do look out um, for that. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, to the site in the description for the video. Um, as always, thanks a lot for your time. Hope you are safe and well, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.